Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as I do and are truly interested and possibly excited about learning more about them. Well, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 8.4, control of externally provided processes, products and services. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand and implement into your own organization or industry. This clause starts off with the sub clause of 8.4.1, which states, the organization shall ensure that externally provided processes, products and services conform to requirements. The organization shall determine the controls to be applied to externally provided processes, products and services when, all right, let's stop there. So basically, as a business, we are required to manage any services provided by contractors, subcontractors, labor hire, or external providers of product, or even services like consultants. And it's up to the business to determine what the controls are to manage them. Let's keep working through and you'll see when we start talking about criteria further on. This will help us to understand what controls we can put in place. So stick with me. You are to determine the controls to be applied when A, products and services from external providers are intended for incorporation into the organization's own products and services. Well, I mentioned this previously. So if the business purchased parts to be used in an engine restore, then the parts provider is considered an external provider. Then these controls also need to be applied when B, products and services are provided directly to the customer by external providers on behalf of the organization and C, a process or part of a process is provided by an external provider as a result of a decision by the organization. An example here might be if you own a plumbing business and you contract some work out to other qualified plumbers that are independent contractors, not employees. They are dealing directly with your customer delivering a product and service ordered from you. This could also be a process or part of a process like using a consultant to conduct a review and provide a report for your business to then action. This clause then goes on to state, the organization shall determine and apply criteria for the evaluation, selection, monitoring of performance and re-evaluation of external providers based on their ability to provide processes or products and services in accordance with requirements. So what is this criteria that we use to evaluate, select and monitor our external providers? It could be criteria such as cost, location, certification. You may require your suppliers to be certified against quality, environment or OH&S. Other criteria could be work history. So has the supplier been good to deal with on previous projects? Have they delivered a quality product or service? It is up to the business to determine what this criteria should be relevant to what products and services they deliver. The main area to remember for this is that you need evidence of the evaluations, selection and monitoring using this criteria. So it's not just lip service. And I haven't made this up as the final part of this clause states that the organization shall retain documented information of these activities and any necessary actions arising from the evaluations. There it is in black and white for you. You need to retain documented information of these activities. So evaluation and selection, and then any actions that occur as a result of this. This might mean you conducted a re-evaluation of a supplier and there had been issues with them not supplying the correct product and therefore the action may have been a non-conformance raised. In extreme cases, the action may be that they are no longer an approved supplier. 
This clause then moves on to subclause 8.4.2, type and extent of control, and states, the organisation shall ensure that externally provided processes, products and services do not adversely affect the organisation's ability to consistently deliver conforming products and services to its customers. The organisation shall a. Ensure that externally provided processes remain within the control of its quality management system. B. Define both the controls that it intends to apply to an external provider and those it intends to apply to the resulting output. This means that you can't use the excuse that they were a contractor. It wasn't me. I had this happen to me years ago when I had a water tank delivered to my house. When the delivery driver unloaded the water tank, the forklift damaged our fence. When I arrived home and saw this, I contacted the supplier we purchased the tank from and they advised me that this wasn't their issue to fix as the delivery driver was a contractor and it was not their responsibility. I promptly explained to them my take on the matter and needless to say, they paid for the fence to be fixed. <laughs> the next section of the clause states, C, take into consideration, one, the potential impact of the externally provided processes, products and services on the organisation's ability to consistently meet customer and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements and two, the effectiveness of the controls applied by the external provider. This means that the controls you have in place to ensure that your external providers are meeting your requirements and your customers' requirements will be higher for those providers who would have a higher impact on your own product or customer experience. For example, Years ago, I was doing a stage one audit. I still audit this same company now, so we've had a long relationship. And I was reviewing their processes and records for conformance to this clause. I asked what the process was that they followed to review their external providers, what criteria they used and so on. They told me that they completed a checklist with scoring against the set criteria. So I asked to see these completed checklists. They proceeded to pull out about three lever arch folders full of these completed checklists in hard copy. I started to flick through the various suppliers they had evaluated and discovered that they had in fact included absolutely every supplier, even those that did not have an impact on their product. They sell new and repair secondhand marine engines. So the evaluation of the coffee shop around the corner was really not necessary, nor was the evaluation of the supermarket where they purchased their kitchen supplies. Not even their office supplies and stationery supply was important to evaluate for this process. All they needed to do was to identify the providers who had or could have a direct impact on their product and their customer and conduct the evaluations and implement the controls on them. Then finally, the last section of this subclause is D. Determine the verification or other activities necessary to ensure that the externally provided processes, products and services meet requirements. What checks or monitoring are you going to plan and conduct to ensure that your external providers are meeting your requirements? what they stated they would provide, and the customer's requirements. This could be your own internal audits, plan monitoring of the work conducted, sign-offs or approvals as part of the process, inspections and so on. This all depends on the type of activities, products and services you provide. So figure out what you need to do and implement it. This clause then moves on to the final subclause 8.4.3 information for external providers and it states the organisation shall ensure the adequacy of requirements prior to their communication to the external provider. The organisation shall communicate to external providers its requirements for a 
the processes, products and services to be provided, B, the approval of one, products and services, two, methods, processes and equipment, three, the release of products and services, C, competence, including any required qualification of persons, D, the external providers' interactions with the organisation, E, control and monitoring of the external provider's performance to be applied by the organisation, and finally, F, verification or validation activities that the organisation or its customer intends to perform at the external provider's premises. I chose to read out the entire subclause all at once because when I read through each point, all I see is some sort of supplier agreement or contract. All of these requirements would be included in the agreement that you have with the external provider. So what scope of work are they providing? What processes or equipment will they be supplying or need access to? What is their process and even your process for authorizing the release of the final product? Is the provider interacting with your customer or other workers? If so, what does this interaction look like? What is acceptable? What monitoring are you conducting and when? So the external provider knows exactly what is going to be checked and at what stage of the work. Put all of this information in an agreement with both parties signing off on it. And do you know what you have ended up with now? <laughs> A fantastic audit tool. Use this agreement to conduct your internal audits against to verify conformance of your external provider against the agreed contract or agreement. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly, you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.